What will we have today? Hmm. Limbo. Awkward elite placement overall, although there is triple elite here. Thinking of joining the clip contest, but you don't know if you're cut out for it. <laughs> well, I'm sure someone will be able to make the cut. How's it going, Justin Boober? I did not enjoy Bellatro personally. I found it rather uh, repetitive. But I think there's some pretty cool things going on conceptually in Bellatro. That's a very polite command <laughs> for Bellatro. Who made that? Not even funny. Cut it out. Oh, I think we got to clip this discussion in the bud here. Mike with the prime sub and the eight months of support. Prime time to subscribe. Change that command to be much more insulting. I really, I, and again, I want to, I re, want to reiterate. I don't think Bellatro is a bad game. I think I don't enjoy Bellatro. That's a, a different thing, and I don't intend to, to bash on the game unnecessarily because of my personal enjoyment slash opinion of it. Others can't stand it either. It makes sense. Uh, it does. It does kind of do a good job of making you feel like in your in a, in a casino. <clears throat> Unfortunately, casinos have a really shit vibe. Wouldn't want to be in a real one either. Did you hear about the Ironclad who won big at the casino? He hit the hack pot. All right, there's your dad joke, crowd. Let's see, what's our Act 1 layout going to look like? Here's a path that is very boring, but kind of effective. Two elites, shop with money, multiple upgrades for the boss. It's fine, or whatever. Be perfectly happy removing a card in that case. Otherwise, it's what? Three potions or a boss swap? Those are kind of scary. I think I just remove one strike. For me, I think Bellatro doesn't have enough layers of abstraction in it for me to actually want to engage with the game. At its core, the game is about making a really big score number. And in a way, optimizing or embiggening a number is kind of the core gameplay of many, many games. But just making a big score to me doesn't feel tangible enough. It doesn't feel like I'm doing something that's interesting. Whereas if I'm, say, reducing the hit points of an enemy, that's just, that's a bit more of a tangible accomplishment feeling. Feels like I've done something. Overcome a challenge. And beginning is a perfectly cromulent goal. I think I'm going to go card remove strike, but I'm not sure this is right. We'll see. This could be a weak-ish act. Maybe I want to do four combats for the first elite. Let's try that. So can I optimize? No, okay. Ash, strike. Hmm. 
Can't kill this in one turn here. Ooh. Well, I have to double strike this turn. Bummer. That's fine. Give me an anger. I don't like wild strike or sword boomerang. These are two of my least favorite common attacks on Clad. Would I have considered taking three potions there to maybe take on the early burning elites? Going this way. That would be a pretty powerful path, actually. And that would have been a good reason to go here to start. I don't know. I don't I don't feel like that's often enough strong enough, but maybe Clad can do it. Maybe Clad can get away with it. Another thing I, I don't really love about Bellatro, you're you're trying to build your run about around the effects of whatever your five jokers are. So kind of like relics and slay the spire, except all your relics have the stupid clown face on them. So they all look the same and they all look dumb. Admittedly a very minor complaint, but it, it, I don't know. <laughs> hmm, Hemo P strike. And they don't actually all have the clown face on them either. Like, the hand one is unique. I'll take a Hemo. Ooh. Well, actually, can I kill you? We can deal 8 plus 22 plus 9. Yeah, that's going to kill you. That's not bad. Butterships, thanks for the prime sub and the 10 months of support. Okay, uh, these are really good early cards. Bigglebee B says, when it comes to Hades 2, will I play in the early access or wait for 1.0? I'll probably check out the early access a little bit. I won't expect to play it very much, but at least a little bit, certainly. A hemo here. Every turn we spend in this fight is going to hurt. Realistically. So the sooner we're out of here, the better. Guild Pot's not too bad. Do we take a Thunderclap, Wild Strike, or Armaments? I'm down for an Armaments here. Upgrade a card in my hand for the rest of combat. Why not? Indeed, why not? Oh boy, that's not a good fight. Could be our skill potion here. Although not on turn one. I think turn one is bash strike. Although it could be armaments bash. I'm gonna do bash strike. I'd like to kill the acid slime next turn probably. As this will attack us for eight or 12 next turn. Cultists will rapidly ramp up, but I think we have to wait on the cultists here. Any upcoming games I'm looking forward to? I am very excited for Shadows of the Erd Tree coming for Elden Ring, June of this year. Very hyped for that. Five. Hmm. Hey, you're not the only one, Vito. I think I also, the first time I saw Balatro, I thought someone was playing Brotato. 
It's like, wait a minute, this isn't potato. Ooh, Sever Soul. I like Sever Soul versus Slime Boss. I like Infernal Blade just fine. We haven't had a good Infernal Blade in a while. Let's grab it here. Steel Pot, I think, is better than Liquid Bronze for Act 1 Elites. Liquid Bronze is one of the worst potions for an Act 1 Elite, because none of them attack multiple times. Silk Song. Well, that'll be next decade, though. Do we upgrade the Infernal Blade? Probably not. Armaments can do a good job of it, though. It's a good card for Arma to upgrade. Let's upgrade Uppercut. Silk Song is a collective delirium. You may not be wrong there. All right, Infernal Blade, show me the Immolate. Dang, that's not an Immolate. Bummer. I think I'm gonna bonk this one. Kill it with Hemo. Why not upgrade armaments? We need the uppercut to be upgraded with priority. Upgrading the armaments to upgrade every other card in hand can be nice, but uh, a lot of times, especially early game, it's best to just upgrade the best upgrade in your deck to make sure that that card has the plus on it. Otherwise, things can get pretty ugly pretty fast. Hmm. Willing to skill potion. B trance is good for this fight. I'm gonna hit you. It's almost a kill. Got him. Legend kills, so I shouldn't need to play Hemo here. Bonk. Very good first elite fight. We score a Peace Pipe, allowing us to toke cards from the deck. And another early Reaper, because this just keeps happening to us. I'll take it. Hey, Darkache, a game that looks like Dicey Dungeons, but isn't. You must be thinking of... Um, wait, what is it called? Floppy Nights. You must be thinking of Floppy Nights. As that was done by the same artist as Dar Dicey Dungeons. Lots of other reasonable guesses in chat here. To what extent do we skip Tokes in Act 1 because we might get Fusion Hammer? I think it's important to upgrade at least this Armaments um, for the chance of Fusion Hammer. <clears throat> Everything else is skippable upgrade-wise here, but we should upgrade Arma. Thinking of Monopoly. The Monopoly Panopoly. Hemo you, but not you. Let's block. If we're lucky, we can heal here. If we're not lucky, we can take a bunch of damage. Seems fine. Up 
upgrading the Reaper won't change the damage. <clears throat> Pretty skippable cards here. Iron Wave is mediocre. Entrench is not so good here. Havoc is unreliable. I say we skip them all. Seems fine to me. The Slay the Spire board game is finished production. It's finally coming. It's been quite the wait. I'm glad the original game has held up so well. Can you imagine if between the Kickstarter being announced and it coming out, the community for the game had just kind of disappeared entirely? can happen in two years for quite a few games. That's a lot of money. This shop is going to be awesome. Paper Frog is very good as well. Enemies that are vulnerable take way more damage. We've got Uppercut Plus here. We've got Bash. That's great. Do I own any of the Spire plushies? I don't. I currently only have an Against the Storm plushie. My beaver plushie. He's so cute with the beard. But no, I've got no Spire plushies. Werewolf 4K with the 22 months. Hello there. Gotta keep him happy or he'll leave. Steadily supplied with wine. And pickled goods. I think this is our strength potion. This is not a very good opening draw versus knob. I can buy a new potion before slime boss. Okay, Bash Hemokinesis is enormous damage. 29 just from the Hemo. We should be able to kill next turn, hopefully. I can do math. Um, uppercut Strike and Triple Strike are the options. Each strike would deal... 8 times 1.75 is 14. Yes. So that would kill. Triple Strike kills. Yeah, we kill. Oatmeal Soldier, thanks for the Prime sub in the two months. And Deepa with the Prime sub. Where can you find the list of all mods? Exclamation point mods has it. I'll mouse over the thing here. Here's also a in-game list of all the currently installed mods in Slay the Spire. Most of these are informational or display mods, nothing that changes the base gameplay, so it should be effectively identical to base gameplay, outside of uh, RNG Fix, which changes the gameplay RNG values, basically to prevent you from predicting them. We actually got health from the knob here. Get Omamori again, negating two curses, that could be good. And Carnage is a bit late. I think Uppercut, Hemokinesis are doing the work currently. We don't need Carnage. Bonk. Is there a command for my PB streaks? Yeah, PB has it. Can Infernal Blade give feed? No, nor can it give Reaper. No feed, no Reaper. Essentially, uh, the quick way to think of it is random card generation cannot give you cards that would give you a permanent benefit, generally speaking. Although you can get Hand of Greed because I don't know why.
You can't get Bandage Up, you can't get Alchemize. But you can get Exhum from random card generation, and that can result in additional healing. Alright, let's upgrade Arma. Hopefully we buy a Battle Trance in the shop. You're not a Battle Trance, and neither are you. And neither are you, but you're all awesome. Prismatic Shard is back. Uh, I'm going to warn you, chat, I'm not doing that twice in a row. Not in this position. Do I want Whirlwind? I definitely want uh, Pendib. Pendib with Reaper is busted good. Strength with Reaper is also busted good. I might buy both in Flame and Spot Weakness. That's how good Strength is right now. What card pool does Infernal Blade pull from if you get it on another character? Whatever your base class is, that's the cards it'll generate. So Watcher would get only Watcher attacks, Silent would get only Silent attacks, so on and so forth. Do we want to push removes with the Peace Pipe? Potentially. I could see us going uh, Spot Weakness plus Card Remove plus Toke here. Toke two strikes or remove two strikes quickly. Um, in a deck that has an Anger, there is really no reason not to remove every strike. Although, if I'm going into Slime Boss, maybe I want uh, Inflame over Spot. <laughs> Our 20 rotating streak was in, I think, September or November. Not April. Yeah, our uh, world record was not in April. I'll do the spot. We can just use Pen Nib on Slime Boss. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, almost a KO, but not quite. In that case, keep him vuln for the Reaper. Kaboom. Get an attack potion. Heavy blade. Here we go. Strength cards. Good pendip card, too. Not doing drop kick. No way. All right, we roll into Slimbo here. I get to upgrade Bash immediately. I like it. Bot weakness bricks, but that's expected. I think it's going to be attack pot time. Oh yeah, that's a very sad draw. Unless... That's pretty sad. Oh, but is it? Pommel strike. Let's go. Ba-ba-ba-boom. 45 to your face. How's that for a split? Stinky card. So, Slime Boss, no problem with one small attack pot investment. We're offered Fiend Fire Impervious Exhum here. Hard to say no to Fiend Fire. Going into Act 2 in general. Although Impervious does do some good stuff. Spot Weakness says take Fiendfire. 
I'll take Fiendfire. Be pretty happy with either a Sneko or a Pyramid with the Fiendfire, but a normal energy-ish relic would be fine too. Get Dome, Sacred Bark, Mark of Pain. Hmm. Those are kind of bad. Not terrible, but kind of bad. Renick Dome spot weakness is so awkward. I think Dome is the most reasonable here, though. We get one more energy per turn. We can't see what the enemies are doing. But we can heal back after the fact. I'll take it. Yeah, Mark of Pain with Evolve can do some really good work, but we don't have any assurance that we can find an Evolve. So I don't think it's all that good. Oh, there's also this. This. We'll think on that. options, but I think we want to go here. Not through here, through here. Something like this on the way up. We don't want five combats, surely. <clears throat> Although we can sustain from combats pretty well. Not in the mood. All right, now for a rousing game of which bird is attacking us? This bird, this bird, or this bird? Or I could just bash one. Chance is middle. You're wrong. Front was the only correct answer. Terrible. Terrible, I say. Simply awful. Heal 10. And team cut in half is 8. That's enough. Could have been worse. Did not like that fight one bit, but that could have been worse. Where's Pummel when you need it? Twelve cards, match them to keep them. Lex. Regret. Thankfully, we can't get cursed here. Lex number two, seeing red. Bash. I don't want to bash. I haven't seen the rare card yet. Yeah, whatever. Wonder what it was. Got a hemo here. Hopefully with a pen nib we can end this fight. This enemy always attacks on turn two, so we can thankfully use our spot weakness here successfully. Hmm. 
We can do Anger Strike, Pennib Fiend Fire. That kills, right? That would be 9 plus 9 plus 20 by 2. That works. Flex spot's pretty good. A second spot weakness. I'll play your game. A second fiend fire. Maybe. What about one feel no pain? Exhaust, exhaust, exhaust. That's pretty good. I've had Deep Breath, Sundial, Abacus here. That's kind of funny. The combo. Guess I'll take a Feel No Pain. Part is an important part of a late game breakfast. Are you doing it? You are. How lovely. Snake Plant might attack twice in a row, or they might not. 17 by 4 is enough, right? At 68, that will kill. You're dead. Nice little 1-2. Turn there. You can upgrade a card or toke a card. I don't hate upgrading... Actually, Fiendfire needs an upgrade pretty badly. I do like upgrading Fiendfire a lot here. As we go into our first elite fight, which will be Gremlin Leader. This fight is very scary with the Runic Dome. So we got to be aggressive here. Hopefully we can just do a nice big pen nib. Spot weakness can tell me if we're being attacked. Then I can do uppercut infernal blade. I guess we should infernal blade first. That sets up pen nib fiend fire. Perfect. Okay, yeah. Tell me if you're attacking. Great news. Um. Yeah. Thanks for that. Well, at least I'm strong now. Ow. We get a fossilized helix. Prevent the first time we would lose health in combat, and we get a second feel no pain. Okay. I'm on board with this. I'm not sure if I'm on board with this, though. Could remove a bunch of cards. Going this way seems crazy. I don't really want to fight Grumleader a second time, so we should only fight one more elite. I'm not going to push my luck here. So that says remove here. More energy? Sure, sure. I only want one shop. Don't even need to go to the shop, but I do want to remove. Fedorin with a full year. Thanks for that prime sub. Hard to believe it's been a full year. But here we are. And now I'm going to rest. Yeah. I'm a little bit afraid. Want to fight over a combat or over an event? I think so. I regret this immediately ish. Good news is you always attack. It's good for us. Hit me for 31 damage. Thanks. This turn hurts though. 
Ow. And maybe this one too. That's 88 damage? No, you just die. Good talk. Paper Frog is strong. This deck really wants more card draw, though. How do we beat Champ? Concerning. How do we beat the Champ? How we beat the Book of Stabbing, at least. And Nib Fiendfire. We get Wing Boots. Okay, we could fight another Elite here. I think... Hmm. Just talked about... Oh my good lord. Uh... Fountain Card Draw. Yes, <laughs> I want these. And that uh, that burning pact is really good. That burning pact is really good. I think I have to take burning pact over offering. Because <clears throat> it's reusable card draw and reusable targeted exhaust with a free upgrade. Oh, we have double feel no pain, so it's also a huge block. Take that over offering. Feels weird. Alright, I'll mess with this again. Not Gremlin Leader, that's good. In fact, I can do some very silly things here. Spot Weakness, Flex Pot Reaper. Just regular Spot Weakness Reaper is fine. Got a power pot here. Go for twenty one, take twenty one. Made me weak. How dare you? How dare you? Ice cream. Energy is conserved between turns. Is kind of cool. With the burning pact, I'm going to take a power through. For large block and wound generation. Now we can take an evolve if we want to. Um, And I think we... Tokimokinesis? Now that we have buffer... Tokimo. <clears throat> Don't feel the need to upgrade a lot of stuff. Okay, I'm going to use Power Pot against Champ. Ball makes our life a bit easier here. There's no need for Bash. Or anger? Or anger. Ooh. 
Champ debuffs us on this turn. So we can focus on getting rid of cards. You call that a weapon? I do. Yes, I do. There we go. It's going to be hard to set up Pindib now. You have ice cream. Twenty-three, not half yet. Saving up some energy might be a good idea, actually. On review of the footage, we can do that. That way, I can play more cards. Here we go. Time to die, champ. Hmm, didn't even need the pendant, apparently. Now we can take this offering. So that we can we use that in conjunction with Burning Pack to fill our hand and draw lots of stuff very quickly. Do we win that without Evolve? Uh, yeah, we just have to not play the um, power through as much. Is the second Fiend Fire bad? I think with a 19 card deck that it is. Actually named Kirby, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Once again, Reaper Coffee Dripper? Seems fine to me. Unless maybe this is Calling Bell for three relics. Take no additional energy. Hmm, Calling Bell or Coffee Dripper? Do like energy a whole lot. Deck has some expensive cards. I'm going to take the Dripper. go here. Is it the same? So I can go here or here. Go here. 99 gold. We're lucky. If we're really lucky. 999 gold. Oh, we have wing boots. That's right. We have two wing boots charges. Hold on. So we can fight more elites, maybe. And more aggressively hunt for Mind Bloom, too. Okay. Duly noted. With Evolve, would second win be too much drawdown if it deleted all the wounds? Nope, because it would be a million block with double feel no pain. But it'd be worth it. Generally speaking. Ooh, this could be worth it too. Apotheosis just shows the heck up. 
Secret technique to find the apotheosis. Or deep breath. Blind madness bomb. Probably none of those. But yeah, apotheosis secret technique sounds awesome. The bomb for damage. I don't know about that. Don't know about that. In that case, let's take more question marks. I guess. Are you hitting me? Good. Ugh. Ow. Okay, not too bad. These two are now both attacking. But I can work around that. Front one is guaranteed attacking. This two might attack. Hard to use uh, ice cream with Brink Dome. Just realized. Drug's good. Gain block, draw a card. How can you complain? Pro tip. You can't. Transient always attacks. Seven damage, turn four. It goes 40, 50, 60. <clears throat> so this will already be zero damage. We don't have to play the other cards. Hmm. Bonk. Not a bad fight. Even set heavy blade to or uh, pendib to nine, and I will. Hmm. Glad to hear you're enjoying some clad runs, Featherfall. I certainly am. Flame Barrier is a great card. It's attack and block at the same time. The stack would appreciate such a thing. Double orb walker is a very scary fight. However, we have pendib on nine. We have full health. They give lots of money and a rare relic. We're definitely going to mess with these two. Even if it ends badly. Maybe especially if it ends badly? Well, the good news is they always attack. Bad news is my face. Ow. Thunderclap, Reaper. 31 twice. Oof. Guess you die. Fetch me my burning pact.
Well, that went well. We're at full health. Didn't cost us a thing to get through this fight. We score a Gurya, allowing us to lift for strength that rests sites up to three times. That is awesome news. I'm trying to think of how to use this. Oh, we get Evolve. Awesome news. Get in here, Evolve. Could wing boots over here and lift three times immediately. It's the only way to lift before the act boss. Not hitting a shop feels weird. Oh, actually, I think I... Oh, no, no, I think I see it here. We fight this elite, go to this fire, jump here, get this fire, get this fire. And then we can fight two more elites. Okay, I like that. First up will be Reptomancer, who is pretty bad for us. We're not that good at this fight. Hmm. Oh, shit. Well, that's bad. It goes to 14, so we can kill you. Block this, buffer this, take these two. Okay. I don't love that, but that's okay. I don't think this defend does anything. Ow. Uh oh. With my face? Egregious waste of the pen nib. Uh, might be dead here. For me. Yikes. Okay, you're not attacking at least. Can't even play the offering. Feels very bad. I have no strength. I think we're going to die. Can you imagine without Evolve, I just draw four wounds in a row, we instantly lose? Terrifying. All right, we do have a good play here. We can at least um, Secret Technique for Spot Weakness, Double Spot Weakness Reaper here is pretty good. Surely nine energy can save us. Actually, probably Secret Tech for Burning Pact is better because I only have one Spot Weakness anyway. Plus nine kills you. Okay, that was a good turn. So was that. Okay, you're 
They're still attacking us. Get out of here. Okay, we didn't die to Repto. That was terrifying. We get a Nunchaku and a Regen Potion and another Power Throw, which I'm clicking on. Uh, and I've decided we should probably only fight one more Elite. <laughs> hmm. Seems reasonable. Although, next Repto will have plus three strength. Maybe not that bad. Lift. We are strong now. Workout routine complete. Training Apo is not bad. Okay, let's see if we can get back to full health. It's triple jawworm? Uh, maybe. Big maybe. Good. Take the rest for the moment. Nice and comfy turn one. You have to be attacking. This doesn't kill anyone. Garbage. So close, though. At least I go to full health. And then we lose... How much health? Oh, not much. Good. Good. Very good. Although another mediocre hand here. Hmm. This is a fun order. Kill you. This one might not attack. Okay, we gained health from Jawworms. That's good. Rugrit is pretty good. Take one Rugrit here. Did we just dodge an extra elite? We could fight two more, but if we fight two more elites, we might run into Burning Reptomancer, who could definitely kill us the second time around. I think I'd rather just not. So I'm going to go to Event and then Wing Boots past this Elite. Just fight the Burning Elite, which will be either um, Giant Head or Repto or, uh, or Nemesis, rather. This is fine. We have Om Omomori here. Omomori. Debuff me, man. You gotta be like that. Ha! Joke's on you. I'm immune to that. I believe it now has to always trigger the spot weakness. Every time. Not bad. I'll take a Sentinel because we have ice cream and a lot of exhaust. Thing never attacks on turn one. Yikes. Totally useless hand, unfortunately, followed by a, another totally useless hand. That really sucks. Mm -hmm. 
Does Flex Pot here give me a kill? Let's see. Five more strength on Heavy Blade is another 25, 50 damage. So it's 108. We'll have eight strength. So 18. This will deal 16 times 1.75. Fifty-four. This will deal twelve. No, thirteen times one point seven five. Twenty-two. So it's only one hundred and seventy-six damage. Not enough to kill. With frogs that ever bash first. No, no, it's not. That would be way less damage because of Pendid. Actually, wait. Well, hold on. Let me double check on that. It'd be another 10, 36 plus. What would this be? 8 strength, 54. 54 times 1.75. Plus we said 16 times 1.75. This one 30 plus 12 times 1.75. Which is 22. That's only 158. Yeah, the, the bash first is less. Er, yeah, bash first is a lot less damage because of Pendip. So no, we don't do any of that garbage. We just take the hit. Don't do none of that. During blow, plus one. Power. That was maybe flex spot. But I think not. Patiently wait for Reaper here. Let's see. Max damage is 12 plus 25. No, that's too much. Bummer. So I have to fight the Burning Elite with 27 health, huh? Don't like that. Giant hit attacks for 13 in phase one. God, I wish this evolve was upgraded. Bummer. Can't attack three times in a row, so never attacks us on this turn. Good reason not to play offering yet. And we can buffer the first big hit. Yeah. Hmm. Uppercut fiend fire, is that enough? I think so. deal lots of damage. We block for 32. Yeah, that's plenty. We do Anger, Fiend Fire, Pendib the Fiend Fire. Pen Pendib something else. Uh, and it's going to be a decent amount of damage this turn, too. The good news is 
Heavy Blade does 495 damage. That's the good news. Bonk. He did. He very did. And we're at full health again. Coffee Dripper has worked out just fine. All right. We're in full health for the boss fights. That's definitely good. I feel pretty good about this deck going into the boss fights. It is a shame that I have to recall here rather than upgrading Evolve, which is what I'd prefer to do. But if we're lucky, we'll just draw the Apotheosis first. If we're lucky. Launch. Gotta hit the bird nerds too. This attack gets buffered. It's always the single big hit on turn one. We don't need to worry about that. Starting on turn two could be the multi-hit. We unfortunately have no way to know which one's which here. Yeah, I'm gonna play both of these. And you're gonna die, and you're gonna die. This should be a pretty easy fight from here, actually. Though I do put one more power in play. The Evolve. The base of 6x4 with 8 strength, it should be 14x4. Yeah, 14x4. 56. Pick one. And then the single attack is only 28. So multi-attack again this turn. Although, what if I just killed it? Oh, that's so close. There we go. Now, pen nibs on nine. I'll take it. This is 48 damage, I believe. Take three? Well, actually, no, take zero because of weak. Let's absolutely raffle stop this fool. Give me some pin nib. Okay, that went well. Absolutely clobbered the first boss. We still have full health going into Donu Deka. These two aren't too hard because we always know who's attacking. It's Deka on turn one, and then they alternate every other turn. Or every turn, rather. Meh. So we take 12 turn one. No way around that. But we get 14 free block here. Take it. I'll take it. Uh, fifteen by two. Now it's eighteen by two from Donu. Once 
Once again, 18 by 2. This time from Decca. I'd like to kill Donu first. That shuts off the strength scaling of the two of them. Decca adds Dazed, and those are good for the deck. They give us block. They give us draw. GG, nerd. Take my W and get out of here. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? Get rid of your stick, dealing 21, 22. Have I been here before? All right, we're into Act 4 with full health, two decent potions. And overall, I think we're in pretty good shape here. I think we want to upgrade the Evolve, although Apotheosis is nice too. I think we need to make sure this Evolve is upgraded so we can play it when we draw it. And then we do have a good amount of money for the shop here, which could go well, but might not. Toolbox, Vajra, Bag of Marbles are all pretty nice. There's a third power through. Although without a second wind, I don't see a third power through being good block. I could take both turn one relics. I like removing artifact from uh, shield and spear. That way uppercut makes vulnerable immediately. Amazing Philly. <laughs> Panic button could be good. Toolbox can give early Apo and many other things. Could just be toolbox bag of marbles. Any value to fire breathing? I don't think so. Our direct attacks are doing plenty of damage. Go double relic here. Toolbox, bag of marbles. Maybe swap the strength pot for a flex pot. We want the strength pot against heart. Flex pot for shield and spear. This is fine. This is fine. Let me go with what we have. There's that Apo we were promised. I'll take it. So it's what, Apo, Power Through, Fiend Fire? That would mean no Feel No Pain. Or I could do Apo, Feel No Pain, Fiend Fire. I think it has to be Power Through, Fiend Fire. Or it could be Apo, Power Through, Feel No Pain, Defend. Block for 28. You'll lose Buffer of Shield is attacking us. Is it ever not Appa? We could go Feel No Pain, Power Through, Fiend Fire. Wait, that might be better. One, two, one, two, three, four, five cards. Six cards get exhausted. So we get 15 plus 18 block. 33 is perfect. Yeah, I think it's Feel No Pain, Power Through, Fiend Fire. We do have another Apotheosis, don't forget. If only I had Pendip ready, this would have been good. One, two, three, four, five. So 13 by five. Yeah, we could have killed outright with uh, Pendib. Bummer. I think I have to fiend fire spear here. Oh, 
Oh boy. Ah, crap. Welp. That sucks. Take 30. And this sucks even more. Take a lot more. Crap. Uh, that's looking fatal. We'll see, though. Oh, that we would have instantly died if we got attacked there. Lucky. Lucky, lucky. So let me just check something. This is the time to attack from Spear, currently. This turn doesn't look so bad. Assuming they're both attacking, how much incoming damage are we facing? This will be 8 by 2. This will be 16 goes to 24, so 40 damage. That's what I have to block here. Um, it's looking like we might want to save our Pendib for the Reaper here. Although playing Reckless Charge and Uppercut does seem like a decent idea. Hmm. No, I'm just going to wait for Pendib Reaper. Really should have attacked me there. Thirty-four to both of them is basically nothing. Although I can add another ten damage each with the flex pot. Getting closer, but we'll be, we'll be better off hitting them first. Is the way of things. This is the multi-attack from Spire Spear. We definitely want to kill the Spear this turn. Um, which means playing Reaper Anger on them. Hold on. Okay, there we go. So we can do... No, I have no energy. I have no energy now. Yeah, Reaper Anger. Ah. Uh, bummer. Just 16. This is 30 million. Be 
Sweet flowers on zero. Oh, wait. Okay, Pendabun 9. Sounds good. Get me out of here. Bottle the Evolve, add a Shockwave. Or Bottle of Feel No Pain, but I think Bottle the Evolve. We went through the effort of upgrading it. Let's make sure it works. I'm not sure we can beat the heart. It's going to depend on draw order here. That looks like a pretty good start. Flame Barrier, Feel No Pain, Evolve. Looks like a good enough start. You get 14 block. Either Armament's Offering and we try to do something ambitious, or we try to hope that this is the big hit first. I think we just have to Arma Offering here. Draw deeper into the draw pile. If we just rip the Fiend Fire and the heart is multi-attacking, then we're dead. Next turn. Is the problem. Pretty good. Let's see. Oh, you're attacking. Now that's interesting. Debating whether we keep this true grit. I think so. Makes us lose some damage on the Fiend Fire, though. But I need ways to keep the wounds under control once we're doing power through things again. Good Reaper first to get some health back. That means not pen nibbing Fiend Fire. It also means spending two energy, although the health is pretty good. That would also mean not playing True Grit. Unless it's Reaper Anger True Grit Fiend Fire, which it could be. Maybe that's what I want. Was the big hit. So I'm grateful we did that in the order that we did. Quite so. Pay number two is excellent. Shockwave plus is excellent. Secret technique, the spot weakness is excellent. Block for lots, take nothing. Hey, this is going better than I thought. Um, we might win this. Kind of thought we were dead for a bit. cool. Next turn could still be bad, though. If we just go bash immolate? Maybe Arma bash immolate? Arma bash immolate. Six hundred more health to go? No problem. All 
right? Dark Shackles, are you lining up correctly? Let's find out. Oh shit, it's attacking. Minus 15 strength. Even if this is the big hit, it's going to be a really pathetic big hit. Hopefully it's the multi-hit. Also damage cap, by the way. So Cody with the 19 months and the very generous tier 2. Oh, the multi-hit. Yes. The tiny big hit. That makes her life way easier. a buff turn. If I can't get the attacks. Guaranteed get all these attacks, though. I believe that's a guaranteed win next turn. GG, Mr. Hart. This was quite a run. GG. Boom. Get on out of there. That makes number six. GG. Tough to do that with a Runic Dome, but uh, not too bad. Not too bad at all. A master class on never giving up. Yeah, after going down to what? We went down to nine health in Shield and Spear. And we had a 50-50 to die outright from Shield and Spear if uh, Spear had chosen to attack us. So this could have been a dead run. Easy. Easily could have been a dead run. But it wasn't. And the streak continues. Yeah, it really demonstrates the importance of setting up Pen Nib. Had I set up Pen Nib correctly in the Awaken 1 fights, we would never have had a chance of dying. Or uh, in the Donu Deca fight, rather. Pretty happy with that. Just 14 more to go. Repto was also scary. Really scary run. What takes more energy as a streamer? A Runic Dome run or a Frozen Eye run? I like... Uh, I think Runic Dome takes more energy. Because you have to account for all the possibilities. Whereas with Frozen Eye, you just have to focus on the possibility that is there. And just like the Clad's deck, after that run, I am exhausted. Has it been done? The Spire sleepeth, and so... Shall I? GG. Not that many upgrades. Although, yeah, it's Apotheosis deck, right? We had Peace by. Only took three cards, but it was still good three cards. We had no strikes in this deck, which helped a lot. And we got rid of um, Hemokinesis, I believe. Oh yeah, and I lifted three times, actually. So yeah, we did a lot of things at rest sides. My favorite type of run. I like runs... Uh, I like storm runs on the defects. Some of my favorites. Anytime Defect gets really OP is, is a good time. Spooky. But I guess the Helix and uh, Runic Pyramids continued. So far, every run has had either Runic Pyramid or Froze... Uh, yeah, or uh, Fossilized Helix. Or Dead Branch. Actually, one didn't. This one didn't. But it was First Relic Dead Branch, so... Still good. So lots of very strong things happening during these runs, which has definitely helped them win. Indy damage, yikes. There had an orange pellets defect with five bias cogs the other day. That's absurd. And yes, I think I do owe the chat a dad joke from a few minutes ago. Apologies for uh had my head fully in the game here to make sure we won this run. Let's see. How does the Ironclad always stay dry? Because he feels no rain.
No refunds. Twitch chat. Way to go, Fignuts. Hit a new record with Searing Blow, getting it to plus 14. Five upgrades in Act 2. That sounds like a great time. Well done. I think my personal record is plus 17. David the Gray, thanks for the prime sub and the 14 months. A joke like that for every word that rhymes with pain. And we're going to hear them all eventually. Why couldn't the Ironclad eat anything in France? Because he could feel no pain. All right, Twitch chat. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break here, refill the legs, stretch the water. When I return, we're going to be switching games to some Monster Train. Feel no train. Bit like that as a title. Feel no train. Would be our title. That's going to be in a few minutes, though. Before that happens, I'm taking a break. I'm refilling the water. So back in a few minutes, when I return, we'll play the other deck builder, BRB. BRB. 